uh, for Solon Simmons. He is the director of the uh, School for Conflict Analysis and Resolution at George Mason University. He joins us now uh, from Washington. Uh, Professor, thank you very much. Great to be here. Now, first off, uh, what exactly is Obama's stance on the use of drones in the first place? Well, I think we're just learning what the stance uh, really is. I mean, overseas, obviously, there's a widespread use. It's uh, in as much use as it would have been under the Bush administration. So there's, there's a, of course, drones are very attractive because when you, when they're shot down, you don't lose any American citizens. And it's because the American people in time of war become very averse to losing any of their own citizens. And so this is a, an effective tactic. Um, it seems, you know, and also there is this, this uh, use of kill, the killing of an American citizen, I believe, in Yemen. So this is, there's a, there's a sense that the drones can be used in a kind of, I mean, not indiscriminate way, but widely used way overseas. And then I think Ron Rand Paul really, he, he, he ramps this up by saying, can it be done here at home? The administration didn't really seem to have a well-developed position on this because it isn't in there. I think they just never really considered about killing an American uh, on, on home turf because it would violate due process rights and a whole host of other things. So, uh, so I think we're, we're learning what it is, but it seems that, that what the, the Obama administration would say this is much ado about nothing. We never intend to do this. And so this was really just a grandstanding event. Do Americans know if uh, drone missions are being carried out right now, even if they are just surveillance? In the United States? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if, if, if they are. I mean, I don't see why it would be. Um, I mean, I don't know if it's illegal to use drones for surveillance here. Obviously, I mean, it's an interesting thing. I mean, what makes them such a scary idea is that this feels like the Terminator movie, you know, come live, that you have these machines which are they're, they're flying over you and sky controlled by Skynet and, and able to surveil and so on. Of course, surveillance is much more dangerous if you think about it over the Internet. I mean, private companies know far more about us than uh, uh, than the drones ever would, uh, because they watch every click that you make, uh, and so on. And the government might increasingly get access to that sort of information, especially if you've been labeled a terrorist or perhaps even mentally ill now that these, the gun rights issue has come on. So I think that the drones are more of a, an alarming uh, symbol than they are a real danger, in a sense that you know, if, if the government wanted to kill Americans, it could easily do so with more conventional means. Uh, but I think in that sense, it's, uh, it just it, it ends up being one of the sort of brave new world type issues that, uh, that, that has come from overseas back home, a brutalization effect, if you will. Now we're looking at video of Rand Paul's 13 uh, hour uh, filibuster in the House. Uh, what was the uh, point of that? Well, I think that he originally, I mean, the, 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 the ostensible reason was to uh, filibuster the nomination of John Brennan to the CIA post. And uh, you know that this is this is on, on what would be thought of as similar libertarian issues. And of course, uh, 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 Paul is um, the son of Ron Paul, and he is a libertarian. And I think, as much as anything, if you think of what happened here, not only did he um, promote or concern about a killing of Americans on American soil, which really reverberated across party lines, Democrats were uh, very excited about this as well. But he also promoted his brand of republicanism, which mm -hmm. is libertarianism. And I think that idea that focus on personal freedom or, or, or social issues as well, sort of uh, free, free notions on social issues, is something that's very powerful and is gaining hold. But also what he did, and I don't know if he intended to do this with his uh, uh, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington uh, move, you know, this old, uh, this old movie, uh, uh, Jimmy Stewart movie, is he, he, he highlighted the idea of a kind of dysfunction in American politics where you have to have 60 votes in the Senate to, to win, to pass any legislation because just a threat of a filibuster is there. He reminded us what a filibuster should be, that you, have to, you should be able to have to get up there until uh, either your feet or your bladder gives way. And that's, a, that's the romantic vision we have in the country. And it's fallen away, and I think you can you can make an argument that there's a, that the Senate is in a bit of disrepair, and that's important because although there are many famous famous filibusters on many different issues, this one included, civil rights was always the issue of the filibuster. The kind of minority rule that we we're talking about was the South, the political South, which was a slave system, and then became the Jim Crow system, and then the discrimination system. So. Civil rights have always been at the core of the filibuster. The idea of those kinds of minority rights being those are the privileged who know that they're in the wrong and the majority trying to work against them. So the filibuster itself, at least the way it works now, is, is highly problematic, and I think that Paul's uh, effort highlighted that as much as anything else. And brought attention to uh, this drone program significantly. Uh, Solon Simmons, uh, director of the School of uh, Conflict Analysis and Resolution at George Mason University, thank you very much.